Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Takashi from Japan. So today I'm going to interview foreign man who is married to a Japanese woman. Okay, so this video is about international marriage in Japan, raising biracial kids. Okay, let's get started. Thank you for your time. Can you introduce you guys? Yeah. Uh, my name is Menya. Hi, I'm Risa. We've known each other for about five and a half years, and we've been married for three years. How did you guys meet? If you don't, if you may yeah. ask. Of course, of course. Hi, Jazzy. Hey. So we met at a Lululemon ambassador. Lululemon? Dinner. Yeah. Oh. We, we met. It's so, 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 so. I love the brand. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Lululemon. We met at a Lululemon ambassador dinner where she was becoming an ambassador and I was finishing a month long influencer campaign. So we met then and then we didn't start dating until six, seven months afterwards. But at the time when we met, we kind of just met as like. Friends, just, hey, just what's people. up? Like, nice to meet you, yeah. kind of thing. And hey, you speak English? Like, yeah, I'm from LA. Also, yeah. I think the marriage process itself was very straightforward. We Japan? went, yeah, we went to the ward office and then were married. Uh, I think that in itself was simple. I don't know. I think I have a different. I think I've been here so long that my perspective is different. But I don't recall there being anything uniquely dif difficult about us getting married. And now that we are married as an international couple, I don't think there's anything uniquely challenging about it. But again, I've been here long enough that I. I can function pretty well. Mm -hmm. I think if I was maybe in my first or second or third year right. in Japan, it would be much more challenging because I would not know so many things. But because I really had established my own life and my own business, by the time we got married, it, it I don't know, it wasn't that, uh, I didn't find it that difficult. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe that's just me. The meeting your parents, like how did it go? Like so for my parents, um, I'm a fitness instructor. I do a lot of coop fitness. I do a lot of Pilates for one of the shows. He came, and I think I didn't tell him my parents are coming. They sort of uh, met there for the first time. That was the first meetup. That was the first time meeting your parents, yeah. It was, in that sense, it was kind of scary, but yeah, it went pretty well. Um, her father is much more international. He speaks English, like, exclusively. Her mother's the opposite. She only speaks Japanese with everyone all the time. So it's probably just easier to connect with your dad, but language is a big factor. It's just harder for me to communicate with as much detail with her mother as it is, uh, than it is with her dad. With my parents... I think it's easy. My parents are extremely social, outgoing people, so... Oh, it was so difficult for me, though. Like, really? Like, ha, ha. No, oh. I mean, like, difficult in the sense... His, so, his family is Kenyan. Mm. They're American, like, they're all in America, they're in Boston, but they're all Kenyan. They're very, like, linear. They're different very, culture. Yeah, it's a very, very different culture. So, when I went to Boston to meet his parents for the mm. very first time, it wasn't just his parents, it was the aunts and uncles and oh, cousins so, and so the it's whole a thing crowd. In Kenya. It's the a thing in Kenya. Uh, yeah, I think Kenyan families tend to spend a lot of time together. So there was just a lot of, there was a lot of family. At the time, it was like overwhelming, to be honest. But now it's really nice because they're so loving and like accepting of the entire family. And so uh, I've learned to communicate with them well now. And yeah, they're wonderful people. In the beginning, it was a lot. <laughs> okay. Next question is about raising biracial kids mm. in Japan. Like, is there anything that you try to do for her? We try to open up the crowd that we introduce her to. So just making sure she meets a lot of different people and culture. So she's not fixed to just one. And so she, when she understands who she really is, like it'll be more easy for her to accept like, oh, there's a lot of different people. So like, I'm my own person, you know? <laughs> uh, I think her experience will be really unique because she has an older brother and sister who are uh, racially Japanese completely. So that dynamic will be really interesting. I don't exactly know how that will play out, but I imagine that it'll be helpful because she'll have in her own family her own siblings who will have a different experience. And I think it's something that they'll talk about as she gets older and can talk. And so I imagine that'll be, that'll be beneficial versus just being her and then she wouldn't have anyone to talk to about it and wouldn't have any support like that right. so i think having the older siblings who are who will have gone through the process of like being kids in japan um will be able to kind of help her with the whole thing but in general as a foreign guy specifically like a black american guy living in japan if i had one major concern with my child in japan it's not about safety or the quality of the school system, I, even things like affordability, my one concern is her being biracial in Japan. Right. I think Japan is... Uh, homogenous? Yeah, it's very homogenous and she's going to struggle with lots of things 
things that you would probably struggle with also in America, but it's just going to be more extreme here mm -hmm. because of the homo homogeneity of Japan mm -hmm. and her not being, not looking Japanese like everyone else. She'll be considered an outsider until that culture changes. And I don't think that culture will change by the time she's, you know, 12, 15, 18. I don't think it'll have changed. I think it'll take more time for Japan mm -hmm. to finally open itself up to the reality that um, having diversity in a country is actually a net good thing. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, I think that'll be one of the greatest. Way to go. Yeah, that'll be one of the greatest kind of struggles for her. But like I said, I think her, her situation will be quite unique because of her older siblings. That's going to be quite different than most of the people. Right, right. Yeah. It's probably it's actually probably interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, does she speak Japanese English as well? Oh. How, how did you manage two languages mm. in the household? How, how, do you, how do you do that? So we speak English all the time. Mm. So she sort of picks up on the English words. He definitely speaks more English to her. I try to keep it very English based, but sometimes like the Japanese words come out. <laughs> she speaks um, more Japanese, but it just comes out that way. It comes easier. out. Yeah. She goes to a Japanese preschool right now. So a lot of the words she learns from school, mm. it's like the Japanese songs and what mm. normal Japanese kids would technically mm. be learning. Mm. Um, so a lot of her Japanese comes from that and also her siblings, which speak to her mainly in Japanese. Mm -hmm. So it's but very... they can also speak English, so it's, yeah, it's very mainly Japanese, Japanese, but they can also speak English. So I think what'll, what'll end up happening eventually is we'll enroll her in some kind of school where she's primarily learning, learning English. But for now, I, I do think it's great for little children, uh, her age and probably up until three or four, to just go to any kind of... I don't want to say generic, but kind of public school. Um, I think it's a great way to meet people and learn the basics. Things like Onegaishimasu, mm. Gochi Sama Des, Ohayo Gozaimasu, all that good stuff. And so she's coming home learning more and more of that, which is actually really cool. Mm. Uh, but I think at a certain point, she'll reach an age where, again, the differences based on the color of her skin and the way she looks will become more relevant. Mm. And that's, it's at that time when I think, uh, you know, a change would probably be best. Facing forms of i don't know if it's discrimination or being maybe ostracized from others because the overwhelming majority of people are full japanese right so nowhere is perfect but i do think that in japan it's probably particularly challenging mm -hmm. um and it ends up being a huge i feel like it ends up being a huge part of the way biracial children who become adults like how their identity forms mm -hmm. being this other in their own country uh, their entire lives and that i find really kind of difficult other than that there are lots of pros whether it's healthcare or safety security etc so definitely lots of good things about raising children here in japan uh, proximity to nature lightness all that good stuff but that con is i feel like it's a big one before we continue interviews, this video is sponsored by Tokyo Tree and Sakurako. Sakurako is a subscription service where you receive a monthly book filled with traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks. Sakurako helps in partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. This month's theme is mochi and fruit marvel. Let's celebrate the artistry of these Japanese flavors with a selection of mochi and fruit. And Sakurako also has Japanese tables where every month. This month I got this chrysanthemum dish. This is Ichigo Mochi Manju. You find a strawberry red bean paste infused with the juice of Japanese strawberries. This is honey apple mochi. It's wrapped in edible or red wrapper ensuring your hands stay clean. And Tokyo Tree is packed with latest seasonal sweets in contract to Sakurako which represents traditional Japanese culture. You can feel a modern life in Japan with Tokyo Tree. This month theme is Osaka Snackation. Osaka is Japan's culinary capital. Me personally I love Osaka food such as takoyaki and okonomiyaki. This is chocolate bread bite. They are fluffy and filled with smooth chocolate cream. This is retro corn puffs. Actually when I was a kid I used to eat this all the time. So so nostalgic. And each snack is explained so that you can see where it was produced and you can also check origin information. This will give you more places to go when you come to Japan. So if you like to experience having a good quality Japanese snack right in your home, click the link in the description below. Okay, let's get back to interview. Is there any possibility that you live in America again in the future with kids or either, you know, like after raising kids, just in general, or you think you're gonna spend your rest of your life in Japan or what do you think? No. No? 100% no. moving back to America at some point. Oh, really? That's yeah. Good. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's... Why? Why and when? 
probably within the first one year of living in Japan, I've now been here 13 years, I knew that I didn't really want to raise my children here. And if I did have a family here, that I would eventually have to move back to America for the reasons I mentioned earlier. So fortunately, we have that same feeling. She's lived here virtually as long as I have now, about 13, 14 years. And she's always wanted to return to the States, whether that's California or somewhere else in America. So we both got into this relationship knowing that at some point we will return to the U.S. We just built a business here recently, so that will certainly keep us here longer. But there's virtually no chance we stay here permanently. What makes you think like that? If it's, if it's not about kids, yeah. Other things, the kids are one thing, but the other things are just, just conveniences of the U.S. Like we want to have, we want to live in a bigger house. We'd like to have pets, like dogs, namely, or even cats and stuff like that. And then there are things like the economy. Like, is the Japanese economy going to improve? Probably not. And it may eventually, 10, 20 years from now, but I don't see any reason why things would necessarily get better economically here, or even, again, in terms of the kids' experience here within, the, within a short period of time. So we love Japan and we want to stay connected to Japan, but there's just no way we see ourselves staying here permanently because there's just so much we miss about home. And one thing I didn't mention for me, and then you could share, for sure my family is a huge part of a reason I want to go back. Mm. The older I get, the more I realize that, you know, my family is a huge part of who I am and I want to be there for those special events. I want the kids to have, like, better, broader perspective about the world. And, like, right now they go to international school, but a lot of the kids are from Japan. So, naturally, a lot of their ideas are very, very, like, Japanese-based and, like, like you have to be a certain way and I think if you're in the States it's a little bit more different you know so. I see. is there anything uh, you want people to know before coming to Japan before moving here when it comes to this topic you know like mm. mar marriage raising kids and stuff yeah being like international couple like you know yeah <laughs> First? Are you gonna... <laughs> do, you want, do you have something to say Jazzy Jazzy you want to say something <laughs> I think when it comes to yeah. international relationships and having children and that whole thing, I would say that if you're coming to Japan because you're interested in finding a partner who's Japanese, just bear in mind, whatever culture you're coming from, Japanese culture is very, very different. Um, I have a lot of friends who have married Japanese or Japanese, Japanese women, and those relationships sometimes work really well. But a lot of times, there's a lot of struggle. And I have friends right now who are going through really difficult times um, because of their choice to marry who they chose to marry. And the biggest thing there is just cultural differences, especially when they've had children. There's a big shift when you have kids. I think it's, I think it's the way women perceive themselves. Uh, it's not like, I want to go and ho and like go hard at working. It's more like, I want to settle down and have kids. And that's sort of the end goal for a lot of Japanese women. And so when they get married to like an expat, for example, they're set for life. And they're just like, they're just going to have fun having kids and doing the mom thing, which I'm not saying that that's bad. But when you think about like life goals and values and expectations for yourself and your partner and like that, you know, it, it's something to consider when you, yeah, been, when you, you know, think about life. I've been here long enough to see a lot of basically a lot of foreign guys marry, and this doesn't go one way, but this is my experience with a lot of foreign guys' friends, seeing a lot of foreign guys marry Japanese women, and again, sometimes it goes really well, and that's great, and sometimes it doesn't. I think the cases where it doesn't, it's just unfortunate, but again, a lot changes when, when women become mothers, and so, you know, you, you, you honestly can't know what your partner's going to be like as a mother or as a father until they become that, and that's... Change. That, and people, people change, change yeah. like for so, sure, hundred percent. Not even just Japanese people. Like I'm sure you know Americans change when they have kids, but yeah. there's a real serious, stark change that happens. That at least I've seen, and a lot of friends have seen in partners when you get married and have kids. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. I'll keep in mind my future for my future. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for watching so far. How was it? That was interesting. I'm also planning to make a video about foreign women who's married to a Japanese man. So when I upload it, please check it out. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this video, click like button. Please subscribe to my channel. If you have any question you want me to ask people in Japan, please leave the comment too. See you next time.